Our next talk is uh, the two-patch method. Uh, Dr. Krishna Iyer from Fortis Escort Heart Institute in India. Thank you, Dean. Uh, I'll talk about the two-patch repair of atrioventricular septal defect. I have no disclosures. The essential components of the two-patch repair are a ventricular septal defect closure using a patch, a separate closure of the ostium primum defect using a separate patch, and a partitioning of the common AV valve into the mitral and the tricuspid components by sandwiching the bridging leaflets between these two patches. The goals of the repair are to achieve complete septation of the atria and ventricles, to create non-stenotic and non-regurgitant mitral and tricuspid valves, to avoid heart block, and lastly, to provide a repair which is durable over the long term. The merits of the two-patch repair over the single patch, modified or otherwise, is that you maintain planar alignment of the AV valves, which probably leads to better functioning of the AV valves. It widens the left ventricular outflow. It's important in situations like TOF AVSD. It preserves the integrity of the bridging leaflets. It does not compromise the ventricular volumes. And lastly, it allows the use of different patch material for the ASD and the VSD. You could use the stronger material for the VSD, which is important. I learned this technique from Roger Mee in 1989 when I was training there in Melbourne, and it's testimony to the surgical skills of this gentleman that over 25 years have not found the need to modify even one aspect of the repair. So the major aspects of the repair include standard cardiopulmonary bypass, standard cardioplegia, a right atriotomy to assess the morphology of the atrioventricular valve. The crucial aspect is identifying the central point of the opposing leaflets, as was shown in the previous talk, and that becomes the center point of this operation. You size and place a VSD patch, then you sandwich the bridging leaflets between the VSD and the ASD patches and create two AV valves. You close the mitral zone of apposition, the so-called cleft, to recreate the mitral valve. You check the mitral and tricuspid valves for competency, and then finally close the ASD, ASD and that completes the surgical procedure. So I'll show short video clips of each of these points of the operation. So to start off with, we take a small strip of PTFE, attach it to one side of a rectangular piece of pericardium that forms the pericardial patch for the ASD. The Cardiopulmonary bypass is instituted using a single aortic cannula and bicable cannulation. Exposure is achieved through an oblique right atriotomy parallel to the AV groove. And the next step is a very diligent assessment of the common AV valve. In this situation, this is a rastily type A, uh, common AV canal defect, and you can see assessment of the caudal attachments. Next, we fill up the ventricular chamber with saline and assess the floating of the bridging leaflets and assess exactly where the single stitch which marks the center point of the line of separation between the mitral and the tricuspid components. This is placed just about the level of the ventricular septal crest. It's important that the two leaflets are perfectly aligned in order not to distort the mitral valve. And then we make an assessment of the size of the ventricular septal defect patch. You measure the length from the anterior commissure to the posterior, and then an assumed height. And this is where the stitch is important because you apply sufficient traction on the suture to align the valve leaflets together, and then you can get an idea of the height of the ventricular septal defect patch. So you eyeball the size of the ventricular septal defect patch. And then we cut a patch of appropriate size. It's important that this length is slightly smaller than the assessed length, so we actually do a slight degree of anuloplasty of the mitral valve. So we start off placing the anterior stitch of the VSD patch, and this is crucial because that's the area where one is likely to have a residual VSD. So we take two sutures. The first suture goes through the patch, through the bridging leaflet, and onto the ASD patch. The second suture, which forms the continuous suture line of the VSD, again goes through the patch, goes through the upper most extreme uh, extremity of the ventricular septal defect crest, and then the patch is sunk down. After that, the anterior suture line continues. This is a continuous suture line walking along the crest of the anterior part of the interventricular septum. 
and as we walk along, this uh, suture line may have to be modified in situations where there is an overriding of the aorta, like in a tetralogy with AVSD, in which case you need a much longer or a much wider anterior portion of the patch, which runs uh, continuously all along the aortic annulus. And then as we move to the posterior aspect of the VSD, one needs to move away from the crest of the interventricular septum. The sutures go on the muscle. You take some anchor at the base of some of the caudal uh, attachments, and the suture needs to weave in and out of the caudal attachments in order not to entrap them. Then we move on to the step where we sandwich the uh, bridging leaflets between the two patches. So these are interrupted sutures which run along the upper margin of the ventricular septal defect, pass through the uh, bridging leaflet at the line of uh, proposed uh, septation between the tricuspid and the mitral components, and then pass through the pericardial patch, which has been buttressed with the Gore-Tex strip. And once we place these sutures, we sink that pericardial patch down and tie the sutures. And at the end of it, once all the sutures are tied, we achieve this partitioning between the mitral and uh, tricuspid components. So that's the leaflets, that's the ASD patch, the VSD patch. You can see here very clearly that's a ventricular septal defect patch. This is the leaflet sandwiched between the pericardial patch and the ventricular septal defect patch. Next, we go about closing the zone of apposition in the mitral component. Uh, we very carefully assess the exact level of the apposition and then place multiple interrupted sutures in order to close this. Sorry, I'm running this again. So these are multiple interrupted mattress sutures placed through the thickest portion of that zone of apposition. And once that's done, then we recheck the mitral valve to check for competence. It's important that the sutures be placed right up to the level at which the cordae are attached to the leaflet because that's usually an area where you get a slight leak and sometimes one may have to put additional sutures at this point in order to completely have the mitral valve competent. And then we check the tricuspid valve for competence. Here again, very often the tricuspid valve really needs nothing to be done. It's competent in itself, but occasionally one may need to tack the septal component of the tricuspid leaflet to the patch in order to achieve competence. Then we move on to the closure of the primum ASD. We start anteriorly. That's a simpler part of the closure. You just walk along the margin of the ostium primum defect. In this case, the primum defect had been enlarged in order to get better access to the mitral valve. And then we move on to the posterior aspect. And in here, we run medial. My technique is to go on to the base of the mitral leaflet in order to avoid the bundle, which is likely to be in this area. So actually walk medial to the bundle and thereby avoiding injury to the bundle. We complete the closure of the atrial septal defect. And after that, one can de-air and release a cross clamp. Closure of the right atriotomy completes the procedure. And at the end of every procedure, our practice is to do an epicardial echocardiogram. And here's an epicardial echogram which shows a good repair. And that's the VST patch, that's the AST patch, competent mitral and tricuspid valves with good bolus across them showing no evidence of stenosis. This is a short axis view, again showing the VST patch septating the mitral component and the tricuspid component with good function of both valves. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Um, just, I don't see any questions from the audience. Just one question. Did you say you routinely enlarge the premium uh, defect? No, it's only a situation where the primum defect, very often it's very small, and uh, you, you really don't get a good visualization of the mitral component of the common AV valves. So it's a good idea to divide the portion of the uh, septum between the primum and the secundum defects. Okay, well, thank you.